So just, um, we're just going to start back into um, the one o'clock part of our day. And um, it's, it's a great honour for me to, um, to welcome Selena Elkington as chair of the panel discussion for this afternoon. Um, and, oh, and I hope you guys had a lovely break while you were away. But um, yeah, so just um, would like to acknowledge Selena Elkington. Um, she's amazing. Um, she is currently has a new position with Otako Health with um, Tiaki Tolka and Otiputi Dunedin, but is still based in, um, in Wellington. Um, we're really looking forward, she's really looking forward to the challenges of this new mahi, the new mahi that she has. She, she's actually um, just taken up a position with Donna Matahaere. So, so um, kia kaha, Selena, you'll be awesome. Um, previously, um, Selena was operations manager at Nova Star in Christchurch. Um, she's been an addiction practitioner for many, many years and is a registered supervisor. Um, as a Māori woman, she has seen the devastating effects that drugs and alcohol can have in people's lives and, um, and the significant role that trauma um, plays in this. So, um, Selena, are you online? Hi. Kia ora, I'll hand it over to you. Kia ora, Selena. Kia ora, Tracy. Um, tēnā tātou katoa. Um, ko Selena Elkington Aho, ko Ngāti Tōranga Tēra, Ngāti Kuata, Ngāti Kuia, Ngā Iwi. Um, I'm part of the Rōpū Whakahaere for Whare Tukutuku who are hosting us today and have the privilege of chairing the panel with their rangatira. Um, the focus of our discussion this afternoon is Pai of the Rangatira. He aha te kai o te rangatira, he kōrero, he kōrero, he kōrero. So I'm just, I can't see who's on, but um, in the panel today, we have, um, sorry, I'm just changing my screens. We have Terry Hidaway. Um, Dr. Maria Baker, are you there, Maria? Kia ora, kira koutou. Kia ora. Um, Ken Tuhoma, I can see you, Ken, on the screen. Kia ora. Kia ora. And Donna Matariya speaking. Are you there, Donna? Sorry, yes. Yes. <laughs> If I could just um, stop, because you're up there on my, in, on my screen, Donna, if you just give a brief introduction. What do you want me to do? Just give a, just a brief introduction. Oh, kia ora everyone. Um, really great listening and seeing people on Zoom that I haven't seen for years. So um, really good luck with Stephen. Hadn't seen him realise it was over 20 years, but um, during the start-up of the Community Voluntary Sector Office. But anyway, so really pleased to be part of the panel. So kia ora. Kia ora Donna, thank you. Um, Ken, I wonder if you could just give us a brief introduction. Hi. Ko tōku pāpa, ko te raroa. Ngāti moitonga ki te roke kā. Wainui te marae ahi para te wai tapu. A te wai tōku māma, ko Ngāti Whātua, ko Ngāti Whātua rākei a hau, ke tāmake hau e nohoana. K level four to new e mato. Na reira hako te ua kai waho he mahana te ngā kai ki roto hi kaka pai te ngā. Kia ora tata. Kia ora, Maria. I wonder if you could give us a brief introduction, please. Love to. Kia ora, Selena, and a namihi to everybody that's on the screen. Namihi kia kaitai. It's lovely to see everybody, and thank you very much for spending the time with us today. Um, please forgive me, um, I am home in the very far north, uh, heads up to all the tahikua te ika whānau that I can see on the screen, and those of you from Te Tai Tukurau, um, but it's raining up here, so if I'm kind of in and out, um, I'll do the best I possibly can. Um, so I'm fortunate to be the CEO for Te Raura, and um, it's fabulous to connect with all of you wonderful leaders uh, from the addiction space. Kia ora koutou. Mm, kia ora Maria. 
Um, Thierry, are you with us? Ma kiro tato, tene te mihi atu ki a kaito, ki o kaito maunga, ki o kaito awa, ki o kaito hahi wairu a tene a kaito, tene a kaito. Hi mihi atu ki a ki ngā kai kōruru i mua i a hau. Nō reira, he mihi atu ki a koe, Selina. Ka nui te mihi ki a koe. Ki te kiti a koe anō, nō reira, he mihi atu. The Terry Hori Wai, I do addiction stuff. Um, and uh, as many of you know, I've been um, in the sector in various roles uh, for a, a rather long time. And my apologies if I cut out in and out today. Um, apparently, I've got I'm unstable and um, I've got short <laughs> bandwidth. Um, if only that was the size of my waist. However, <laughs> um, I am here and I'm enjoying the conversations of the day. Noreda, no himia tuki akoto. Kia ora, Terry. Thank you. So um, I've got some questions that I can start us off with with the panel, but um, uh, for you ones that are in the audience, please feel free to pop through some questions on the chat um, for the panel. So um, I think I'll just, we'll just make a start, eh? So in no particular order, the f somebody can answer What's going to be important for Māori in the new health system reforms? You might as well go, Terry, because your face is the one that's on my screen. Uh, kia ora. I think what will be important, and going back to uh, Donna's corridor earlier on, is around how we make manifest our rangatiratanga and our mana motahaki. And I think um, us having, us being uh, services in our leadership, uh, having uh, clear relationships or a, a better relationship, a much more of a um, developed relationship with the iwi and Māori panels in the new uh, structures. That's where the decision making, I think, will be happening around what we want to see. And so I'm suggesting that our leadership um, needs to be developing those relationships in order to uh, get our, our mana motahake and our rangatira tanga um, being led out. In terms of our workforce, I think um, the reforms say that we need to be thinking differently about how and where we uh, think about our services and who we're servicing. And I say servicing in terms of the you know, idea of service rather than necessarily about it just being doing stuff. And I think um, our idea of what the treatment sector, but alcohol and other drug and problem gambling, uh, what that actually looks like should and could be different in the future. So that's a starting quarter at all anyway. So kia ora. Kia ora. Ken, any ideas around what's important, going to be important for Māori and the new health system reforms? Yeah, I think uh, removing the layers that were traditionally there that sort of suppressed Māori, particularly the Māori voice. Mm. I think it's opened up some channels so that we can have direct conversations with the minister. Um, I think it's also opened up channels so that iwi voice gets a direct flow to where it should be. Mm, uh, of, of course, there's bureaucracy that's going to come in the way and impede some of this stuff. But I think that we've got an opportunity now for our voice to be heard uh, clearer. And yeah, those layers just been removed. Uh, we've got a great opportunity to evolve and build on this for the next generation. Mm -hmm. And as Māori, we're used to bureaucracy and having to push through those layers, aren't we? Yep. Kia ora, yeah. Ken. Maria, anything to add? Mm, kia ora. Yeah, <clears throat> what I want to do, um, just be maybe a little bit differently, is I want the, uh, would like to invite... Um, the whānau that are on screen at the moment is just to either close your eyes for a second and to think about a, a new system that is more attuned to Māori, that would be better able to deliver the best possible outcomes for the whānau hapu iwi that you're working with. Once you've come out of that space, I want you to put up a word up on the chat because actually you're going to be significant in contributing to the new way of doing things to improve our overall health and well-being. So if I can just invite you to put a word up. Mm -hmm. 
as we're doing that, we need to be thinking about the aspirations. Many of us have been fighting, many of you have been fighting for what's better across the system. We've had various rangatira in our careers and our professional and personal lives who have been fighting for a better system for us as Māori. And this time we are wanting a new system that's defined by Māori, that is actually informed by our norms, about our realities. It's also about our ability to be deciding at all the levels and to foster an integrated approach that will work towards the same goals and the same values that anybody else has here in this country, but particularly that brings all the aspects together uh, that contribute to hauora and well-being for us. So that's me, kia ora. Let's, um, mm. as the, kia ora koutou. Kia ora, Maria. Ona, do you have anything to add? Um, I just think I have to agree with everyone. I just, I would just like to remind everybody, um, with Ta James Henare's words, you know, we've got to be great Māori here. We've got to be able, we've got to resist the seduction of going to someone else's table if it's not working for us. And we've actually just got to keep. So even though I might sound re very critical of everything, which I am, and I'll remain, <laughs> I, I don't think we've got an option but to lean into the space. And it's, as we lean into the space, we've just got to grab things towards us. And I think that will come out in what um, Gilbert talked about, the locality units. And I agree with him that um, AOD shouldn't be submerged into mental health. Mm. But I'm thinking more, I'm wondering, with rather than just not being in there, why aren't you part of the core things for Māori health? You know, like mm. CVD, the thing that impacts on, on Māori ability to meet their needs is the fact that they have all these other things happening in their lives. And that's going to have a huge impact on their ability to engage. So in spite of everything, I'm just saying to people, lean in. Mm. Kia ora. I wonder in terms of the um, new health reforms, and especially given we're going to have a Māori health authority, I'm just going to throw it out there to the panel. It's not one of the written down questions I've got. <laughs> but I'm just going to throw it out there. How do you see that working for Kaupapa Māori NGOs, given the current system sets up Kaupapa Māori NGOs to all fight for the same pot of money? I think, um, Selena, I was just going to say, um, the, the much vaulted Māori Health Authority, I think, um, is mainly going to be an advisory and, and just another ministry. And I don't say another, but I mean in that space. And I think um, for services um, and maybe even for community, our locality, our iwi Māori panel, where the decision making gets made, will be for many of us the key place to um, play. The Māori Health Authority is where many of the leadership maybe need to be thinking about the strategic place. So I think there are different roles and for those who want to see um, stuff happening on the ground, it really is how do we shape the iwi and Māori panels for whatever our locality space is going to look like. The Māori Health Authority is still going to be the driver out of for the strategic place. So I think that part of the, um, for me, it's trying to separate out those two places. They're related, but they require some different actions. Mm. Maria, I saw your hand up. Yeah, I disagree. Um, the, the reality is, is that we're in a different shift now. Certainly the Māori Health Authority will provide a construct and it'll be interesting to see because we, want, we need to be uh, advocating for the inequity and the amount of money that many of our Māori providers haven't been paid. You may have seen the comment that I put in the chat just earlier on. Uh, the National Hawaiian Coalition commissioned a report on behalf of the Waitangi Tribunal claimants and in it stated $530 million whānau under, underfunded Māori organisations across 20, 20 years. Well, we know this quarter all in terms of how our contracts are funded, but if we're looking at the, the work that needs to be done, we need a process of transfer. We need a process that addresses the inequities and ensures that the pūtia is shifted over. Now, the Māori Health Authority is believed to have the direct relationship with the minister, never mind mm. the ministry. It will have straight connections to the Health New Zealand and the public health unit. So it'll be key. However, the responsibilities and the activities and the leadership will happen in our localities, in our regions. And we've already seen fantastic Māori community iwi leadership 
that are already driving forward to state really clearly, this is our model for Aurohi, and they are informing the ministers at the moment. <clears throat> As we know, <clears throat> excuse me, with the Waitangi Tribunal claimants, and especially out of the 2575 report, uh, we still have claimant representatives who are hot on the kaupapa to ensure the minister and government follow through with the final Crown responsibilities to address the inequities for Māori. So, kia ora. Mm -mm, kia ora. Donna, I saw your hand up. Yeah, I did. What I was going to say is um, I agree with Maria. Things have to change. Now, I saw this change happening probably about four or five years ago, not to the Māori Health Authority, but I saw change. And one of the things I wanted to do, so we were just an ordinary kaupapa organisation. One thing I wanted to do was to try and get us into a position where we're totally not reliant on funders. We're totally not reliant on things like that. So we, we've moved into a space where we're generating our own funding at the same time as delivering government contracts. And I think that people need to do that. And I've taken a specific asset ownership model here, is we actually need to, it's not a, you can't just be a co-papa agency. You need to actually be part of a collective of them. You need to be um, changing the way you do it. and. Um, and it might mean what I've been trying to say is refuse entry at their table. If the table doesn't have the, you know, the example I gave before, Selena, in a different context is we've got, we had a, there's a, there's a problem between the vegetarians and the carnivals in New Zealand. So what we've, what someone has done is the carnivals have set up a, um, a big table and a hui for us to come to, but we get to that table and there's nothing there for us to eat. Mm. And that's just the analogy I, I like to use. It's one saying, um, be brave, be really brave, hold on to it. I'm always awake at night gasping. Um, but actually, remembering Pa James Hinardi, you know, we, we've got to be great Māori and we won't find the template for that working with others. That's what I'm saying. It's not that we don't work with others. We actually have to be really discriminating in who we work with. Challenging kōrero, Donna. So um, I think I'll go to the next question because it kind of segues in nicely. What might a future AOD workforce look like? Just a comment and I, I gather the uh, rangatira will pick this up. We need a new system, but our system has to have the capacity to address our needs. Mm -hmm. um, our advantage at Te Rauora is that we've seen fabulous um, Māori come through particularly with lived and whānau experience, select to work in spaces uh, with our whānau hapuiwi in our communities who are challenged with alcohol and other drugs, problem and other things. Um, and it's been fantastic to see, it's been like a momentum, it's a change in what we see in other parts of the sector as a health workforce. But my kōrero to you is that uh, we need to be able to be advised about what are the skills and the knowledge and the opportunities you require. Obviously, if whānau are coming through to access scholarship and training, there must be more employment opportunities to make it so, so that Māori are at the front line to be able to support our people. So what is it that you need, maybe, is the question that we need to know, and you put that in the chat box. Kia ora koutou. Mm. Maria, you spoke before about um, at a regional equity at a regional level. C can you just expand out a little bit more on that, given we know how it works at the moment and we're, we're looking towards a better, brighter future. Um, Aroha mai if I missed it when you spoke before, but can you just tease that out a bit more for us? Sure. So in regards to the health system reforms, and particularly around Māori Health Authority, but more broadly, even a step back for Tino Ranga Teratanga, regions, Māori leaders and people and communities are devising their own model and approach already. They're standing up and saying, this is how we're going to work in Te Taitukurau, for example. This is how we're going to work in Tainui, etc. And when you have a look at those uh, organisations, they're a mix of post-settlement, pre-settlement, iwi organisations with experience in business, but many of them actually are haora-led organisations. Many groups, many people already leading, already delivering service to communities, 
Mm -hmm. And particularly so if we see uh, the responses during the COVID uh, since last year, uh, really being clear about their sovereignty, about the determination and their decision making. Kia ora. Mm, kia ora. If we look at what a future AOD workforce might look like, and we think about what Gilbert talked about, about he thinks that, and I agree with him as well, that um, addiction should come out of sitting within mental health. And it's actually mental health addictions and disabilities. So wh what do you think, what do the panel think about uh, what the addiction workforce might, might look like in the future? If we I had think, a yep. Sorry, I was going to say, talk. Selena, um, that for me, the, uh, our workforce has always needed to be complexity capable in order to work across a number of issues, not just focus purely on our AOD or gambling, because no one comes with just one thing anymore. Um, that not only are we complexity capable, but we're also culturally capable. And so that means just having whakapapa isn't enough if we're going to say we're working in that Māori space. So being able to work with uh, uh, across a number of different spaces, being able to ensure our cultural capability so that we can actually then shape the way we work. And um, that means then that we um, know a little bit about mental health, know a little bit about other things that come in and we're not, we're not being um, sidelined. The other thing is our workforce um, is occupied from as, on a continuum. So there are those in Fano who have informal roles in helping to um, work with the harms or to support recovery or well-being. And then we have um, those bit more who are in the allied spaces in social services who um, see people for a whole range of other reasons, but touch on AOD and gambling. And then we might get to the more um, specific AOD workforce that we, we know and gambling workforce we know. And even amongst that, there's that specialist then, which is where we know there is some medical harms. And so we have to have our, our Dr. Vickies and, and co who can deal with that. And so our workforce um, covers the whole cross, the whole gambit, but all of us need to be able to work with more than just what we um, see in front of us. We all need to be able to be culturally capable wherever we are on that continuum. Sorry, I'll go after you, Ken. That um, the workforce will look like what the, what the ecosystem looks like. So currently we've got governance boards that have no Māori on them. Currently we have executive management boards that have no Māori on them. Consequently, that's what our Māori workforce will look like. It's managed by non-Māori. It's driven by non-Māori philosophy. And we're actually um, expected to put in place those practices. So when we change that environment, we're doing it at the higher level with Maria and you guys punching away at legislation and, you know, reform. But also for us, you know, those that are working on the ground, they can make a difference by talking with their uh, leaders within the workplace and saying, what does our governance board look like? What is it, why isn't there any Māori on our executive? Um, mm. So we can release, you know, some of the pressure that's on there and put our Māori view and voice within those forums, we can change what's happening. The other thing is that some simple changes, oh, sorry, I'll jump straight to another point. No, that's all right, you carry on. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's other sort of simple things that we can do, like changing titles. Um, doctor is going to always be respected, but the peer support the, and the cultural support, the word support sort of lowers the significance of that, mm. the role that that person plays. So heiaha te, te, te taitara support. Uh, what is it supporting actually? It's supporting a Pākehā paradigm so that we can push these non-Māori things. So it needs to be a pope uh, rather than a support. It needs to be holding up to our Māori. Anyway, I think that's, that's for me. Um, that's what I, yeah, and peer support, I'm a great supporter of that. So change the environment at real micro level. Uh, move, make sure that we as a group leaders uh, move our workforce along with us so the voice can be carried to. Mm, kia ora, and absolutely agree around the um, we need Māori at the governance level. Can I say something, um, Selena, now? Yes. 
<laughs> okay, so you asked about what might it look like. So I actually have a bit of a vision here about what, and I'm taking off from what Maria said about localities. Things will be different at localities. But for us down here in the way that I've um, set up Takaika is we and it was done to disrupt the primary care sector, if you like. And we did that really well because we have 7,000 patients, you know. Uh -huh. um, but the other part about it is I see a role in having um, in having the AID sector a lot more integrated with the primary care sector so that you get those different people out there. I've always thought about the navigators and I've thought I wanted to turn upside down the notion of final order navigators and say professionals need to navigate each other. You know, they just need to navigate each other. And then so that the navigator is just there for the whānau. But I see too many navigators thinking that they're the, um, they're the actual um, practitioner here when they're not. So I'm looking that I agree with Gilbert as well, that I think that you will always be the poor cousin, what I always call the bridesmaid. And unless we get an integrated way of delivering our AOD services to people in their context, that won't happen. So one of the things I was going to suggest is we need a type of a commission, if you like. You have a mental health commission. We need an AOD commission. I don't know if we've got one, but we need one where that commission's within the Māori Health Authority. That is the part that commissions services for Māori in the AOD sector. So that's just one of the things I'd like to promote. Mm, can you just write that down and flick it in an email to Tracy? <laughs> Thank you, Donna. I... Um, I think I'm going to look on the chat and to see what um, our audience have been saying. Um, this is from Tapohi Henari. I must again, we need more support for those kaimahi. It can get very negatively political in the workplace when we are untrained to be aware of our own cultural bias. We need to be diplomatic and role model what respecting mana and of other. Uh, uh, read today, um, indemnity, sorry, <laughs> to sustain own rangatira. We also have, sorry, does somebody want to say something? Oh, I was doing the, the, the uh, random totoko. Oh, well, uh, um, from Pam to everyone, the workforce should focus on educating our communities in Pano. If our whānau had tools, would make our mahi a lot easier and our whānau more confident to deal with crisis. Building our governance and technical skill base is important to represent at governance levels and what decides what suits us as Māori. I took all your Pam. I think that um, there's quite a lot of chat and support of that has come through there. One of the things that I'd like the panel to consider is um, what's been talked about, apart from what Donna mentioned around a uh, commission, is practically what we're doing now. I'm not sure that it's that different. So I'd really, you know, we want to envision almost a wish list of what we want the addiction sector to look like. Um, it needs its own table that people want to get to, to start with. Yeah. Yeah, and, and working in the addiction sector for many years and for different agencies, often I felt that we were like a leaf blowing in the wind. We were pushed from the ministry to do this, from the contract manager, which is the DHB, and then we had corrections, but also telling us what to do, and then we had OT as well. I, I don't... That's how I... I think that stuff needs to change and I'm not sure how that might look. I don't have a, a, a template for it, but I'm just going to throw that out to the panel. What do you think about what I've just said? Do you think it's mm, kia ora. spot on or wrong? Yeah, uh, kia ora, Selene. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not privy to the history of um, AOD, but I hear um, what I'm saying. And in my role as CEO for Te Rauora, um, I've made some observations, especially in the last few years, that we've been able to totoko specifically the hui Māori uh, for the cutting edge kaupapa. Mm. And um, I, I guess the observations are a few things, but 
um, I, I, I'm curious about, um, in some ways, there's a paternalistic approach that obviously um, this, this experience and intelligence sector have been impacted by, and it concerns me. Um, it concerns me because it almost feels like there's a sense of helplessness when in fact the Māori AOD sector is one of the most incredible I've come across in my time in working in health workforce, okay? Mm -hmm. so, so part of this wavering in the wind can be stopped by yourselves. And I want to draw back to, again, the reflections from what I was informed from uh, Te Ofata, the hui there, and then uh, was privy to the corridor that happened at Ngāti Whātua uh, mm -hmm. with the Hui Māori. And that was a call by Māori to stand up as your own entity within the AOD space. So I'm just going to lay that there because you're not going to be flying in any winds if you have your own entity, whatever it is. Mm. Okay. Oh, kia ora, Maria. That was an awesome korero. And... Um, Really timely, actually, because you're right. Is um, we need we do need to remember that behind us we have a Maori sector. I was just going to say, oh. Selena, I, I take to call the um, uh, Maria's corridor. I think some of the um, the history for the sector has been that that the sense of being the victim. That's why we're always the poor harder cousin of the poor harder cousin of the poor harder cousin. Um, but um, and the other part of this, I think, is the fact that uh, apart from the harm space, overall in our community, AOD, well, sorry, alcohol in particular, and to a certain extent, gambling, is one of those socially acceptable um, vices. And the wider society then pushes um, us back into being um, not so much a mainstream service, but one of those uh, sort of almost like a morally driven um, vice kind of thing. I know we've changed over, over time and many of us in our sector don't hold that space but I think the wider societal thing discriminates um, still and many of our sectors still take that on board including um, those in decision making um, places non-Māori, our contract still see this as um, not so much a wellness space but um, still about that negative space and I think those kind of things also help shape um, why in some ways AOD and gambling, not just in the Māori space, but the wider, um, will, won't quite achieve its same independence. Because the other thing, I guess, is the, the Western paradigm, dominant cultural paradigm, is driven by uh, people in white coats and stethoscopes and, and titles like doctor. And, and uh, mental health is full of those ones. Whereas in AOD, we've never really had that. So we've been able to be much more independent and drive in our own stuff, but we've fallen prey to the notion of that, that status space. So I guess I'm saying um, we need to, as Maria said, own how brilliant we've been, own our, um, own our ability to kind of do our thing, because that's what the sector has done, but also we need to address the wider space that AOD and gambling sits in our community, not just, or well, we could concentrate on Māori, but we do need to address that as well as what we do in our part of the sector. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll add my uh, piece to that. Um, uh, tūmai te Māori. Ngā, yeah, ngā iwi Māori, ngā tangata Māori tūmai. Um, we've learnt enough and we've gathered enough intelligence from Tauiwi on how to put together this stuff. Uh, we haven't emptied out our kete on the knowledge and intellect and sophistication that it takes for Māori to be Māori. So we own that. And uh, I think we're creating spaces now where particularly iwis that are strong uh, commercially, I'm sorry to say, they don't grow these commercial, these money trees just to be rich. They actually grow them so that they can send it across to their social and iwi development areas. There's a purpose for the money matrinas. It's not to buy a flash car. Uh, although, if you want to buy one, hide it on you. But the main thing is that that putia goes towards this, uh, towards uh, health and well-being, oranga, te oranga o te iwi. 
And I think that um, that Māori right now uh, just need confidence. We don't need a lot of training. We don't need a lot of, you know, all the guesswork's taken out, all the abstracts have been broken down. We're really onto it, intelligent people. We just need the confidence and the support. So when we're talking about an NCAT and putting together some sort of structures that gather that support around them. So I want to cleverly try and bring this up, Terry, or clumsily, <laughs> around NCAT, and, or not NCAT, but a Māori, a Māori uh, forum that can advocate on behalf of Ngā Mahi or the sector itself and push to have our own minister, the minister of AOD, its own agency, you know, or whatever that is, but putting together some pragmatic support systems around our kaimahi so that we can advocate at the higher level for them. Here we mm. Maria. Got a purpose. Mm, yeah, kia ora. just want to, um, just to ups on that. Um, we're in a, we're in a different political climate whānau. It's the most we've, we've ever had in terms of Māori ministers in government. Mm. And actually, Minister Henari, Penny Henari, the, muk, the mukapuna to tāhemi that, uh, that Donna was um, sharing about is in government and is actually our Māori Health Minister. He also has the Māori Health Workforce portfolio in addition to other portfolios. He is our Minister. And um, for many of you who have had the opportunity to engage with Minister Hinari will know that he's grassroots informed. So we have a potential there. The other thing too, Whānau Ma, is the top-down colonial system that we've all endured and for some of us are still enduring, um, still has problems for us and just adds to um, the negative legacies that we're also still experiencing and experience. So we certainly have to acknowledge uh, those challenges, but I think part of that too, which I'm curious about, is that in a collective Māori, we can come together stronger to be able to support each other. What we need to know, I suppose, for those of us that are a little bit more privileged and have access to resource, i.e. I'm talking about the organisation I work for, we need to be informed about what it is you need so we can drive it with you. So I guess that's a bit of a heads up. The other thing too is that, you know, never ever underestimate a group of Māori. Change happens when there's a group of Māori get together and have the same values and the same mission and vision uh, for our people. So kia ora mm, Kia ora Maria. I just noticed we have a question from our audience. Pani. Are you there? Hi, uh, I, kia ora. Uh, Tuatahi mihi ake, ake arā ki a koutou. Um, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou. Um, the, I, I don't know if this is a question, or I guess it is a question to everyone around, um, look, I, I love the idea of, of us um, working in our kaupapa Māori organisations where we can be Māori um, with simplicity and, and work harmoniously um, with the values that we all cherish. Um, not everyone gets to work in such an environment. And what, I, what I've been thinking about recently is um, whether there is an appetite amongst us uh, to develop an, an arm or an organisation which audits non-Māori organisations with their kaupapa Māori or, or their cultural safety rather um, to ensure that they're not just brownwashing what they do to obtain funding, which they do. Kia ora. Kia ora. I'll open that up to the panel to answer. I wonder if to help Matua, um, that people just either put a thumbs up and say, yeah, we should be auditing non-Māori organisations about their cultural safety is what I heard. Uh, but you're also asking, should there be an organisation set up to do that? I see some thumbs up. Yep, I'd say 
I'd say absolutely. I, I don't understand why we don't actually have a professional body that um, certificates our workers as well. So um, I'm quite surprised that there isn't that in, a, in the AOD sector. I think, and I'm saying that from lessons learned in the Oranga Tamariki sector, which is unless you actually have those in there, unless you actually have a monitoring function or a place where Māori communities get to sign off what counts as cultural safety, um, we won't get that. But that's something that I see as part of a whole commission, role of a whole commission, uh, um, AOD commission, and doing, and doing the monitoring and things. Um, I wouldn't waste too much time rushing out to monitor um, non-Māori because, and I'll just say this, you know, because it came to my mind, there was a, um, a lovely woman, African-American woman, Audrey Lord, who said, she said two things, the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. But the other thing she said was, a primary tool of the oppressor is to keep the oppressed busy with the master's concerns. Oh. So, you know, I'm just saying, let's, let's find out what our, what our business is in here, what is the problem we're trying to solve, and then just go off and do it. We can do anything. I totally took all that. Um, there's a, I'm looking at the uh, chat thingy, and uh, Pipi Farauro Tenakwe. You probably asked a similar type of question around Māori that are working in non Māori organisations. Yeah, and, uh, the question was, what, what is your advice to Māori working in Pākehā organisations and to the thousands of Māori in the care of Pākehā organisations? Are you going to make a comment? No, you go for it, Maria. <laughs> I, was just going to say, I, I was just going to say, can we, this is used against us often where they go, the larger percentage of Māori are in non-Māori organisations. But that's not by choice, that's by the way they're structured. So mm -hmm. let's not imagine that if suddenly we weren't in Pākehā organisations, that Māori wouldn't get any service. Yeah, I think the other thing too, Donna, is that for some of us, um, yeah, and that's certainly a reality in terms of what employment opportunities are available uh, within our communities. But um, I also wonder too sometimes, um, specifically for Māori that are in specific Crown agents, may not realise that they're leaders, that they're viewed as Māori leaders by us and the Māori communities. And, and that comes with it a, a bit of um, expectation and I think sometimes also an inherited challenge and legacy, as I mentioned earlier, when, when our people work in Crown agencies and perhaps there's been some histories of distrust amongst our community. So there's a real challenge, I think, uh, for Māori that are working in non-Māori non spaces and particularly in Crown agencies. And I think <clears throat> there's, there's, a, there's also a challenge between those of us that work in NGO and iwi to our colleagues who work in Crown. So I think, you know, there's another dynamic there, but the other reality in that dynamic is um, <laughs> the whakapapa is the one that kind of binds us to each other. And um, we still have to look after each other when mm -hmm. we're working in these other places. So, you know, it's complex. And I think um, we've got to be able to support each other the best as possible when there isn't a lot of us in the workforce. I so talk all that wherever you are, um, wherever you're working, again, complexity capable, culturally capable. And I'd also say if we shift our um, shift our thinking to more of a whanau centric space, wherever we are, um, that will change the way we practice. And that um, sometimes people will go to the places a bit like Maria said, because they, they have no choice. It's the only game in town. So again, if that's where they are, then um, how we work with them is equally important regardless of the house they're sitting in. Um, our aspiration, of course, would be that we'd um, end up owning it. But in the meantime, um, the, the people in our care and that we work with, um, wherever they are, that they deserve the best quality uh, mahi that we can provide as we walk alongside them. Mm. I think, too, it depends on where you're sitting in the organisation. If you're client-facing, you do the best and you follow your heart and follow your tikanga for what's best for the I said, client, for the tangata fai order. Whereas if you're in a management area, you can make a wider impact across the organisation. 
and those ones are sitting a little bit higher, you, your, 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 your influence is different again. But I think if you're working uh, front facing, uh, fire order facing, and you're trying to change an organization from non Māori to Māori, you're going to do your head in. You know, um, so I think just for me anyway, just knowing, you know, where the best influence, you know, where I can shoot and hit the target. So I think from that, and yes, um, go haere ki ngā, ngā ratonga Pākehā, ki mihia ngā mā tauranga, whiwhi tohu, haere ki te collect your pay, whaka piki ake tō whānau, katahi, and then move on. And then move on. So it's it's not a destination. It's It might be it might be for some, but here, we, that's, that's taku for kā. Mm. We, um, somebody had their hand up. Um, was there a question from Te Pai Pai? Oh, kia ora, kia ora, Selena. Aroa ma, I was trying to weasel out of that question. Ah, uh, too late. <laughs> I to pai, aroa ma, whānau, nā te tūrei te kata mai nei, tau toko. Kei papa, he muhi nui ki a koutou. Takarua, Maria, um, Terry, uh, Donna ma, um, good to see you all again. Uh, just joining in really late on that kōrero, I just thought, just as an example of where we're working uh, with the Pākehā organisation, is that we have a JV with Salvation Army, the bridge, and we provide a uh, Totafiri, uh, Kopapa Māori support person. His name is Tipini Babington, a beautiful fella. He brings, um, he brings, you know, we if we all work from the basis of we provide um, a cultural framing and well-being through Te Ao Māori, we provide that framing through our connection to our fire order and to the Kaimahi Katoa. Um, that we provide that um, on the basis of um, our fire needing connection, positive connection to self, culture and community and whānau, whānau recovery as well. We can do that as individuals or we can do that as, a, as an organisation. The premise of this uh, venture we've got with the bridge is that Te Papa Arihi provide the Kaupapa framework in supporting the kaimahi that works with the bridge, um, recognising the fact that all kaimahi um, Cultural competency is one of those, those hoi ho that we, we stopped um, thrashing a while back. Um, and it, it is hard for me to say that because I think it's uh, still got its place in supporting um, Kaimahi uh, Tiriti uh, uh, partners there to, um, to get to a space where they can better engage. But in terms of cultural framing and framing of well being, that's our kaupapa. And I think sometimes it's important to educate the sector on. That, that ability to do that is intrinsic to Kaupapa Māori, Kaimahi and organisations um, because it's important, to, it's never been really recognised in this space and um, it's, it's something that we have to actually start and educate with our whole sector in the sense that framing, cultural framing is connection to tikanga, whakapapa, um, tai ao, rongoa, etc, etc. But um, it's still important for us to um, frame it that way, I think. I remember I don't talk with things like cultural audits, aspects like that, but um, I think of Tipini, if someone was to audit his kaupapa, uh, Māori on Māori, um, as an advocate for the, the organisation he's working with, everything's case by case and everything's subjective. Eh? Our interpretation of kaupapa Māori is subjective to ourselves. Um, that's hence why we don't have a, a universal framework as such, I guess, other than you know, things like tapafa. But just in terms of um, our cope of what we're looking at doing in terms of supporting the sector, re recognising our workforce is in crisis for Cope of Māori, but also how we how we support the model with the lack of a um, those rangatira available, those unicorns now we're starting to call them. I wonder if I could just put it back to the panel. You made a comment around um, Kaupapa is subjective. I wonder, in terms of, we've been talking about regional equity and locations. There seem to be a few keywords that have been brought up today. I wonder, um, Maria, if you wanted to comment on, do you think that as a sector, we need a universal kind of tikanga to guide us, or would it be by region and location? Mm. I guess um, if I step that back a little bit, Let's face it, we're in a situation where we understand and have continually understood the incongruities culturally of the current health interventions and support for Māori, right? 
So we're all in the in the space of understanding and, and responding and creating solutions and frameworks uh, that will work with our people. And in fact, um, uh, in respect to one of our rangatera with Te Raura, with Terry Kesten and the work that she's doing with Tōra Tapu and the work that she's just done this year in Pātikitiki with the Māori frameworks. In fact, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of Māori strategies, frameworks, interventions, screening tools, measures, you name it, it's in practice, darling. So, um, yes, certainly from the days of 1984 and the Whare my word, have we not grown. But uh -huh. I meet many of you are working in these spaces and using all these tools in, in reality. And I suppose when I step back again and I hear the, the lovely example with Pai Pai Arahi and Jeremy and the mahi that they're doing there, they're brokering the relationship. They've had to bring in the Matauranga Māori expertise into a space within a position to enable access to the gentleman that he's just shared and the beautiful uh, approach that he has. And that's part of our current realities, but the issues are still, is that we've got issues with uh, inequity still. <laughs> We've had to create that kind of a contract set up because somebody's actually created this, the, uh, the service spec to enable it rather than giving Jeremy the whole contract. But anyway, mm -hmm. that's not a story. I think, <clears throat> I think the thing is, um, in your question about universal, it's not a question for me to answer. If we think about Matauranga, it goes my ano, mm. he tupuna, he, uh, te ao huri huri, te ao tawhito. Um, but in this space, and, and again, I just uh, relate to my analysis of and work across other health uh, disciplines and practice areas across all of the health and disability workforce. The depth of the Matauranga Māori practice is in the AOD sector whānau. You may not believe it, but it is. So I think um, you, it's up to yourselves and your intelligence and your body and your school of knowledge and your own universities, actually, is up to you uh, to make the decision about uh, what's going to be important going forward and uh, and to continue to drive uh, what you're currently doing. So I haven't answered your question, Selena, but a comment. That's all right. I was actually expecting Taco Donna to give me a wee growling on that question, but um, that's all right. So Terry, I see your hand is, is raised. Again, um, just, uh, I guess, the just wanted to share, and, and what I'm going to share isn't um, unknown to most, I think, on this broadcast. Um, in terms of what's happening in the correction space with the Kitea service, which is the the new innovation at uh, a mental health and addiction service um, being built at Waikiria Prison, the approach is being um, based on the relationship with mana whenua ahika, i.e. Uh, Raukawa and uh, Ngāti Mani Poto, and not just the wider aspects of those two, but um, of those two who for what, um, on which um, Waikiria is built. So the relationship is built out of um, the mana whenua ahika on which um, that land is. And it's the same land, I guess, that um, Tokunui was built on. So the relationship is one with Mana Whenua Ahika. And they're pretty clear that while they have relationships with Waira, Waikato, um, the tikanga and kawa being driven for this new development, including um, participation in governance, participation in co-design, co-production, is based on their space, not the wider um, Tainui space or the wider Māori space. So when we've had these discussions around um, things being driven out by Mataranga Māori, they're really clear that they really mean Mataranga um, Mana Whenua Ahika, Raukawa Slant, um, um, not Slant, um, and um, Mani Opoto. And while they have some similarities to um, the Mataranga elsewhere, and much of that's the same, they're really clear that they drive it out of that relationship. And um, they're also really clear that the treaty or treaty or waitangi is about hapu, not about the wider um, spaces. So again, their relationship is about them being mana whenua ahika, not necessarily about the treaty as such. So that, um, that sense of, um, I guess, our future development is also about how we rethink um, who drives the tikanga and the kawa. 
And if it's the mana whenua car space we occupy, then it's about the relationship we have um, with them, not just in terms of the a letter of support, but what does that co-governance mean so that they can actually, we can be held accountable to how they define what needs to happen in that, and not only just the mataranga space. Um, and their relationship then is, um, they have a responsibility then to have relationships with other mana whenua car in other places. Um, and so it's been, an, it's been an interesting space for corrections to have to sit back in that co-governance role. And actually, they've said it's not co-governance, it's governance, and we're leading that space. Um, so it's an interesting kind of development. But it does mean the tikanga, the kawa, the cultural competence, if you like, has been driven from that space, not a broader mataranga Māori or that universal Māori space. This, they acknowledge their similarities and it's something um, they and we're working through at the moment. So it's an interesting um, take that I'm still getting my head around, but it is an interesting take on what's needing to happen. So yeah, kia ora. Mm. Any comments from the panel? No. We might move to um, another. Oh, sorry, Maria, do you want to say something? Oh. So, my next question, well, our next question is how do we ensure that we are influencing design? Anyone? Donna. Sorry, Selena, can you repeat that? I'm choking on my topic. <laughs> How do we ensure that we are influencing design? Well, that's what I mean about not going to a table if it's only going to show potential. If, it's, if, if things can't happen, because we're not, we're not the public sector that's really slow. Mm. And the public sector, government agencies are way too bureaucratic. We're not like that. We can make decisions really quickly. So if we're not seeing something emerge, in the first couple of weeks of a conversation with somebody, it, for me, it's usually not going to happen. we just got to be prepared to not be, I mean, I don't know if people feel like me. I've been in lots of Zooms lately where I'm thinking, why am I even talking to these people? You know, who are they? Not Māori, you can imagine. And I'm just thinking, why are you taking my time up explaining things to you? So I just think we have to be prepared to ditch the conversation if it's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Well done. <laughs> um, there's a capacity issue too. Um, we want to be among uh, across everything, but you know the reality is we can't. Um, or you know we're restricted. There's a lot of barriers to our capacity as well. Um, and unless you've got a friendly across the across the fence that sort of shouts out to you or throws an apple core, you ain't going to find out. So um, those ones that are positioned um do the best that they can but i think we need more leadership coming through we need more people to be more aspirational about sitting at these levels so we can build that capacity and i'm sorry maria i'm not pushing uh, te rau water forward here or anything but you know some sort of training programs around governance around executive you know being a manager around uh peripheral vision and you know placing yourself in comings from the workforce at the peer support all the way through to these levels. Um, so we need to start navigating some of our whanau to build our capacity so that we can ensure that we are part of the design. And in fact, we are the, reason, we are the ones pushing design. Mm, I guess the, I, I just want to put another part into this question is we've been talking a lot about our leaders. Um, who are our leaders? Like, does everybody know who our Māori leaders are in the sector? You're looking at each other. <laughs> Pono. I was going to say, think so. Pono, Monica. <laughs> Pono, it's you. You're the leaders. Whoever yeah. you're looking at in the mirror in the morning, it's you. Yeah, Shark absolutely. Totoko. Oh, kia ora, Maria. All right, then. So if, we've, if we're the leaders, then... We need to get creative on how we influence design. And I, what, where do we put it? Did yeah, you have sure. it? Jeremy? Yeah, just um, just an example. Eh? We um, part of the three DHB 
in Pornicky, AOD Collaborative. That's a bit of a mouthful. Um, and that Copapa has been quite good in terms of design. Um, it's, it's got a recognition for Copapa Māori pathway within all the pathways, right from uh, acute to rural to um, residential and to um, community. So, but uh, Māori sits there separately. But, you know, that Rōpū acknowledged, um, they acknowledged the Tiriti. And so we're going into the implementation phases and we're waiting for this indication. I guess we're already ready to set up uh, Taha Māori in terms of that partnership. And so we're going to keep them first battle, you know, first run off the ladder is really have they set that partnership up? And that's where it's at. And I think that's where Māori Health Authority is bringing that level of discourse to us. Every, every interaction, the agenda now is Māori and Tiriti partner. And regardless of all the other agendas, there's BHB, NGO, PHO, all that as well. But at the very top of that agenda is Māori and non-Māori, the Tiriti partners. And um, so even with that AAD collaborative, we're going to ask them or challenge them on that basis. Where's our Māori representation? And who is it? And in terms of mandating it, that's a challenge itself. But it's basically all of us in Pornicke. So um, just we bring the odd one in that's um, scary enough and, and, and tough enough, like the Auntie Carol Kua. She's part of the fold now. So she mm. comes in and she tells them what's what. And so we're all, to be honest, we're all turning into cows. Um, <laughs> and so we're all taking that far far to them. Uh, but it's the way it is. It's, it, the, the reality is you've got to make an assumption with their treaty partners. They can't fathom, they can't see how that works. So we have to show them and they'll wait and let it slide if we don't. Um, and that's that's the reality. They don't even think it's not on the agenda. So it's it's way up on our agenda. So it's about us actually just holding, uh, putting a, creating a footprint um, with that. And so the AOD Collaborative has got a commissioning function and that's quite important for us. It's important too on how they, run that function, what that means in terms of access to residential uh, for Māori, for example. So there's a whole whole way, range of things and what we want to do to achieve that uh, that level of leadership anyway. So that's just an example. But the other one I advocate for too is to know water. Maria's done a fabulous job and being present in that partnership too. So that's another paper from there too. Kia ora. Mm, kia ora, Jeremy. Terry, what are your thoughts? Um, about being in design, again, it's the it's going to come back to what is it we're trying to design. Um, and there are a whole range of different things. There's, there's stuff around workforce, there's stuff around service, there's stuff around policy. And we all, as Maria said, we're all leaders. And so we can all play parts in that. And some are more suited to different parts. So being clear about what it is we want to design um, and uh, getting the right people to either our table so that we design it for ourselves and as the theme of Ranga Tiratanga has been um, said all day, that we we do that um, and that if we validate that ourselves, and I think as Donna said, we're nimble and flexible as NGOs that we can run with that and it, and it becomes our, um, if you like, it's almost like it's our membership to the club and it's the things, uh, accountability to one another that we maintain that. Um, and then in terms of if we want to work um, wider than that, again, the mandate that Jeremy talked about comes from being part of those collectives and being able to bring the, the collective um, support mandate and also, I guess, the validation for what's being developed. And design, is, uh, design should be one of those things that we don't think about it being just built in stone. And, and it's one thing that we have to think about it as being organic and and able to move and that comes back to again um being able to be nimble and agile all those words they use rather than just necessarily locked into a, a one one system kind of thing so yeah for me our our ability is also about locality what jeremy's um described in the um dupoko may be slightly different to another collective's way of doing things in another part of the of not only the rohi but um, the country um, but it's equally important. And then I would hope, and, and throw what off is a really good umbrella for that, is those various collectives are able to join up, talk about their consistencies, so that we can um, present a united front in various um, things. And then rather than airing our differences, being able to find collective ways to find solutions so that 
we um, again can show a united front and that helps validate what we do design and implement because that's the other part where many of us are really good at designing not great at implementing and um, if we don't do the follow through then we're going to will be forever designing and when I think that's the other part having um, that collective view helps us to keep us um, moving towards implementation so again have Karawit no Hmm Kia much of a Ken, a silver arm um, knowing you look like you had something to say. Well, no, uh, 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 maybe, but uh, my arms are going because my aunt Rodiwi has dropped off the bloody load of boxes of stuff. They're going around the hood and dropping stuff off, and I'm like, what the? <laughs> but, um, well, for the Komatua, Ken, can... for the Komatua. Uh, well, I'm sending that straight up back out the door in that case. <laughs> Kia ora. Um, Carry on. No, no, you can. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, I took all what's been said so far around design. And um, Donna said we need to involve our whānau, absolutely. Our rangatahi voice, where's their platform for this? Do they have their own separate design platform or are they part of this? So, just some mm. of And me pe hia ngā wahi ne. Mm. You know? Ka taia, ka āhai, te tāne, te kōdero mō te wahine, ngā take mā mō te wahine, me pēr here. So I think within the Māori Forum, we understand those dynamics, and we're able to flesh them out without separating them and becoming their own separate thing. Um, so he pākāro. Mm. Kia ora. Any of the other um, panel members want to add to um, kōrero? Kia ora, Selena. <laughs> um, I guess I just wanted to add again, you know, total for everyone. I think, I think one of the problems that we will always face is it's not knowledge we lack, it's the courage to actually do something with it. So let, I mean, and there's enough great people sitting around here with us, you know, but it will rely on someone taking the lead on it for us to do it. But I do think, um, I do think, you know, we, we just have to, this isn't our first ra rodeo, guys. <laughs> you know, let's just ho let's just hold in there. And but we need to keep our aspirations at the end. It might not look like that when we first enter into it, but we hold on to that vision, and we will do things by stealth, through legislation, uh -huh. anything we can to actually get it to, to occur. Taitoko. Well, Selena, can I bring up another point? Probably a whole different type of discussion, but it's around we are focusing on almost like the government is a foe. That's our whole idea that we have to turn upside down and shake and empty out the pockets. There's the corporate sector mm. that are spending millions of dollars against us. So while we're trying to stop addictions, these guys are throwing more money at it, more resources. Uh, at a blink of an eye, they can spend a million dollars on a national advert. They are signing up All Blacks. So how do we compete against that? Um, I've just asked the question. The other one is the churches. They have our lands and they have our souls, actually. And they have separated themselves from the operational side of things and said, let's put up a social service. We'll hide behind it. We'll learn all these things. We'll be incompetent at doing Māori stuff. And at what point do we turn around to say Māori whenua, ka ora ai te tangata? You need to start returning. So for those that are in the Salvation Army, I dig it, I get it. And for myself that was working with the Methodist Church and all that, there are some layers behind that front that I think that we need to expose. And um, that's one of them. So I brought up the corporate corporates who are feeding this addiction habit, this addiction, sorry, and that is our competition. Um, and those ones that have good answers and good remedies to our well-being, which is whenua, they're holding on to it and they're capitalizing on it. It's no longer whenua for them. It's property development where they've created motels and hotels and money's going into it. So here, I thought I'd bring that up. And the other one is justice in the courts. There are a lot of things that, that are transformational that's happening in the courts. 
when I think about the Whare Whakapiki Wairua as one, because I think I've been close enough to it, and um, how <coughs> how um, at the justice level, you know, their philosophy and their understanding was purely we need Māori involved, we need Māori in there. But once it drops down into service level, that's when the brakes stop. That's when those ones that are managing the delivery and the, who are the leaders of these kaupapa, of these court systems, also hold on to the kaupapa or te ao Māori approaches. So I thought I'd just raise those and say uh, there's other things that we need to address as well. Mm -hmm. Kia ora, interesting. Um, on the top of my head. In my is heart. There, <laughs> um, you made a comment about the corporate, the corporate sector, and you're right, they've got so much money they can throw everything at it. And, um, you know, my fakaro was that we really need to, as a, well, if we're the leaders, my fakaro was that. I would like us to head in the direction, even though some of us are going that way anyway, of being really pushing harm reduction. Um, one of the polls that were in um, that popped up earlier on today, uh, you know, one of the questions is, should we increase the price of alcohol? And all I could think about was cigarettes and what increasing the price of cigarettes did to whānau in terms of uh, um, domestic violence, the, the burglaries, the break-ins. I get, I get, I know the idea. I know it's about we need to stop smoking because it's killing us. But the venue and the means that the government and the powers that be are using in order to do that, in my opinion, has created a whole lot of other harm. So um, I kind of think um, around alcohol reform in, in that way, and I'm just chucking it out there to see what the panel have to say about that. Any yeah. pakaro? Yeah, kia ora, Selena. I think um, even in the, the topics right across the last um, conversations, um, uh, clearly there's a couple of things about, uh, I guess, having the, the confidence to confront. Uh, so we're raising the issues and... Um, Really wanting to, you know, be clear about the distinct problems in the situation, um, you know, about practices and approaches and programs that are potentially harmful for Māori. Um, the other part too is that uh, what what is concerning across all of these kind of measures uh, to to demonstrate that inhibit, you know, to prevent harm, such as the raising of the. Uh, the cost for cigarettes and all that kind of carry on is it's counterproductive uh, for yeah. our people when we're stuck in situations yeah. and then it pushes us to another zone. But I guess if we step back from that too, um, what concerns me, I suppose, in some ways, it, that, that's, uh, where are Māori at these decision-making places? Where are we in the implementation? And I guess the other thing too, when we're thinking about a generation now that are very pro-Māori, we're in Te Reo Meo and Tikanga, we've got generations coming through from Farikura uh, that are leading. Um, you know, there's a number of us that can call it Māori reasonably comfortable and in significant positions. And so when I think about some of these things that have been tinkering around the sides, it's really counterproductive um, for our own cultural preservation, darling. You know, it's sort of like there are some real challenges in, the, in, in our ability. We get forward a little bit, we're having to come back a couple of steps. We're going forward, we're going back, you know, all that kind of carry on. And I think we really need to have the ability to voice, to be strong, to activate, and to be able to inform people that are in the key places um, that these decisions are not going to be great for any of our people. So we need to be kind of be really, look, really looking at who's in the hood. You know, you did ask a question before, about do we know who our Māori leaders are? Actually, we need to understand who the leaders are across the space. They are mm. also Ngā Hoa Haere. If there's not enough of us Māori in places, then we need to find out who the Pākehās are. And there are a few. Mm. So we've got, to, we've, got to, we've got to bring them on board to have an understanding about the impacts um, on us in terms of the, the, the continual you know, disparities and issues that, we're, that our people are experiencing. So... I, I don't know. I think um, the, the whole model still is very Western oriented. A lot of the decisions that are being made across health services and conventional health decisions and things like that are still very Western oriented. And they still do not take into account the holistic perspectives or strengths base or anything else in terms about collaborative, 
social relationships and things like that, all those things are very important for Māori, they're still not taking those into account. So what are we going to do about it? Mm, yes. I, I think, um, Selena, for me, that, um, this takes us back to that earlier quarter about the drug harm index and the usefulness of it. And um, that those are the kinds of things that we can also use, and especially if we can develop a, a, a cultural frame that fits into that, what harm looks like for Māori, that that's the kind of um, evidence base we can we can help to assist us in, in, I guess, driving a way forward. The other thing is things like rising, raising the prices is, and as everyone said, on its own is not that much use, but as a suite of, of interventions, it has a place. Um, and I think that's the other thing that um, we can't just look at one thing. It's always looking at multi-pronged approaches. And I think that's um, also one of the things we've certainly learned in the, in the COVID space and particularly in the vaccination space is that the message and messenger is really important. And if we're talking about the preservation of whakapapa, then how that's passed on as opposed to the, just talking about harms, talking about the preservation of whakapapa um, and from people for whom I guess it's important in our lives, and it is those um, for Heidi, I think um, you called them Maria, um, makes a lot more difference. So actually how that message is delivered and who delivers those messages are important. And I think the same thing applies when we're talking about the, uh, this wider thing of um, this nāngara, for want of a better term, of AOD and, and gambling in our lives, that if we want to change it and change what the corporates are doing, then we need to get to a space which is about relevance and preservation of our whakapapa is perhaps the most relevant thing that we all have in common as as Māori, whether Fano, Hapu or Iwi. So kia ora. Mm, kia ora, Terry. Does um, do any of the panel want to comment any further on on what we've just been talking about? I was just going to say, Selena, that I think context is really important here. Um, a lot of people have talked about what happens at that micro level, you know, in engagement with whānau, and I think that's really important, but that comes off, uh, um, uh, we need the right structure, we need Indigenous institutions for this to work, but the other part about it, we need to understand our context, so what we know from Len Cox's research is that one in 14 of every single Māori baby boy born between 1914 and 1960, one in 14 of them were in care. Mm. Now, if that sounds it gets worse because during that period, that age group was nearly 50% of the Māori population. Mm. So that's a context. This is the whānau that you'll be working with. And, partic and unless we understand their context, we're not going to understand why they don't trust or why they won't seem to do anything. So I think that's really important going forward is keeping, keeping in mind who it is we're actually working for. You know, and it's and we do need to understand that we talk about comorbidities in another part of, of health, but it's a little bit like we can't see children outside of their whānau. I can't see people outside of the context in which they were produced. So we produce a large number of our leaders in that probably late 50, 60 year old group who are now out there unwell because they were part of what Len Cook called a, um, a cruel ex social experiment. Mm. And so that's, I mean, I think that we need to really have an understanding both of the structures and, that we live in, but also the, the structures where whānau come into our care or into some service with us. So I do think that we need to remember that. So it, it doesn't, I'm not trying to make it more complex. I'm trying to say, we know all this stuff. We do it all mm. the time. It's complex and we do it and we just have to keep doing it. Mm. Yeah, thank you, Donna. Kia ora. Mm, kia ora, Donna. I just want to add the edge. I think you put it perfectly, actually, uh, Donna, because that's exactly where we see the application of the context. Is, um, there is a model of care that's needed separately for our state survivors um, and the whānau that are working with them. You know, I guess the hardest thing around this whole minimisation thing is that we can't teach empathy. We can't train it. It's, um, it's got to be intrinsic to a model, I guess, of our kaupapa, but it's also... It's needed desperately as well across our allied health professional uh, workforce because that, that harm is ongoing. So our, again, talking about our survivors of state care, they, they're frequently disengaging where they don't feel 
there's a connection or empathy for their their their, their needs. So it's a, it's definitely needed in terms of um, teaching. But the language itself is um, it's complicated. It's it's sort of it's overly um, targeted. It's always the context seems to be missed. So again, it's almost we need their own purpose around training uh, for harm minimization. We're sort of look actively looking in that space ourselves with uh, this acute, acute drug harm uh, purpose we're talking about with the ministry as well. That's uh, one of the biggest gaps is um, uh, harm minimization training from a, a te ao Māori perspective. I think. Mm, thank you, Jeremy. I wonder, Tracy, are you on? I can't see you on my screen. Uh, kia ora, Selena. Oh, just wondering, was anything um, that you wanted to quickly speak to? Always. <laughs> um, just, just, just a couple of things, really. So I um, just want to acknowledge everything that's been said and how important it is and, and how important it is to bring it back to that context because con context is everything um, and how we understand that. And, and the work that um, we do with Fano, who are experiencing a whole range of things, um, understanding them um, in its fullness. I always say my Fano and all their glory. And when I say that, I'm talking about everything that they have and boy, they have a lot going on. And then Donna will laugh about this stuff because we're always talking about our whānau, um, even though we're sitting in forums where there are um, you know, other officials. It always comes back to that thing about how passionate we are that our whānau get the best of what's available um, by right <laughs> and by design. So, um, you know, I'm a strong advocate of a good plan, <laughs> always have a good plan um, and have another plan to back up that plan. Um, I just want to pick up on the corridor about leadership. So um, in light of that, um, I'm, I'm one of these ones who, like you, Maria, you know, you're a leader when you step into the space and say you are. Um, and I've watched, I've been around the sector for a long, long time, um, not quite as, maybe as long as Cherry Huruwai, Maybe, Pia, <laughs> maybe not quite as long, not that old, eh? Uh, but anyhow, um, just thinking about over the years how um, leadership has often come up as, as, as something um, for discussion and um, has gone down various paths. And at the end of the day, um, your ability to lead um, is about your energy, um, about your commitment, about your courage, um, and, and, and about resource. So um, in terms of um, what I've seen over the time with NCAT, um, they have not served the purpose that I would expect uh, leadership voice on behalf of uh, this, this sector. Um, they've not served the purpose that I would want them to serve. Um, and Maria brought up that um, at the last couple of um, pre-cutting edge marihui, that um, there'd definitely been a bit of a, a, a call or a karanga out to Te Rau Ora to, um, to, to step up. Um, I think we certainly have the resources to, um, to, navigate, to navigate some leadership and advocacy in the addiction space. Um, and through Whare Tuku um, I, would, I would see that as a vehicle for that to occur. Um, with support of the Rōpū Whakahaere and potentially a couple of others. So, you know, um, whether, whether we, we want it or not, there, this, there, is, there are things happening around advocacy and treatment um, because that's what we're passionate about. So all of those people like Gilbert, Tuari, um, Ma, Selena, Tamia, Tamia, have been advocating in that space um, as leaders. So, um, yeah, I just want to put that out there. We, we are, well, I'm claiming that space. We, we do it. We do it well. We do it and um, we're resourced um, to be able to do it well. And, um, yeah, still have that passionate drive around making sure that our whānau, our whānau, get the best, get the best of what's out there. So, yeah, that's me. Kia ora, Tracy. I love it Thanks. when you drop things like that. <laughs> you heard it here first, Father. Um, I'll just 
aware of the time. I know we're, we're actually doing really well for time. So I'm wondering, um, I might call for final comments from the panel and then wrap up if that's okay. Any final comments, Perry? I'll jump in there. Okay. Um, Terry's gone robotic again. <laughs> um, yeah, look after yourself. I think we're talking about leadership and you know what a leader does, but I think there's some impacts that happen to you in your way to in your modi. And often we leave ourselves behind and we forget about that. We get so driven. And I think our whānau too forget, you know, we put on a face and they often think we're well. So keep up the karakia. Um, you know, stay true to your own beliefs. Uh, measure your modi. Go and see your kaumātua. Go to your tangis, go to all these other hui's, not just the papa one. Um, and look after yourself. I think mentoring is important as well. If you can find a mentor or if the universe brings you one, I say grabbed. Mm. <laughs> you know, I've, uh, um, we don't need a thousand of them. Well, I didn't, but the ones that I do have, they're very, very, you know, special to me. Um, so, and another point is that um, stay engaged with this corridor. The, the re health reform is happening and it is happening at a blistering speed. It hasn't gone into lockdown like the rest of us. Um, government and parliament are still pushing forward on a lot of things. Um, there is the uh, thing around gays and lesbians and kids and all that sort of stuff that's happening. So um, keep involved. And my final point is local government. Uh, they're the ones that do the licensing. They're the ones that push out all the, all the new pubs in the off license stuff, uh, get your whanau involved in making submissions. Otherwise, mm -hmm. Ramihi nui kia tato, uh, Modi ora kia tato, tēnā koutou katoa. Mm, kia ora, thank you, Matua. Kia ora, Ken. Hey, uh, apologies, I didn't be, wanted to be one of those ones where you see and the lips are moving and no sound, because um, as good a song as that is, it does look funny. Um, my final comment really um, is to think about the themes that have come out of today. Um, in terms of rangatira tanga, uh, and thinking about uh, how we um, advance our Māori position and whakaaro across the board, that, um, as we've been reminded, every time we look in the mirror, we're uh, leaders. There are some leaders who have roles um, to be the, um, the kiori at the front of and exploring and checking out, and then there have other leaders whose role is to take up other functions and some of us are um, tail in Charlie's but we all have a role um, to do and um, being able to pick up those roles and be accountable for them I think as Ken said um, keeping ourselves well safe and grounded um, helps us to be able to do the various roles and functions we need to do I'm um, taking on board again what Donna says is that um, uh, for many of us we're concerned with the day-to-day if you like the front facing um, mahi, the micro, uh, but in this space, we do need to be thinking as a sector, uh, the Māori addiction sector, um, that we do need to be thinking at that macro and again, um, what vehicles we have to help um, us in that space, because that in the end helps our micro. Um, enjoyed the conversation today in the Fakaro. Uh, just want to remind people that the um, the gambling harm consultation is out this week. So um, it's a short window, um, but if we want to uh, impact on some of these, uh, on, the, on the potential harms and the actual harms of um, harmful gambling, if we want to make a difference into where the resources get allocated out of the levy, um, then uh, contribute. And as you contribute, um, either as individuals or groups or both, Think about uh, the conversations we've had today about um, Tariti, about uh, Rangatiratanga, uh, and how they can inform uh, the design, I guess, of the space coming up. I really would encourage everybody to um, think locally, um, but also um, to consider global as well. So uh, I know, uh, be kind, 
um, save the cheerleader, save the world. Uh, Nore te hemi hea te kia koutou. Kia ora. Mm, kia ora, Terry. Thank you. Final comments, Donna? Kia ora, everyone. I just want to say thank you for allowing me into your space um, for today. I guess the, my parting shot is everyone go out there and be great Māori. That's what, mm. that's what we're just in to be, so let's just do it. I love that. Thank you. Kia ora. Um, Maria, any final comments? Oh, just that it's been a real privilege um, to connect with you all today and just um, I think if anything a collective Māori endorsement uh, for our way forward needs to be something that we all get on board with whatever the kaupapa is that comes out um, and that we back each other. Kia ora. Mm. Mm, kia ora. thank you Maria. Thank you all for your um, time, giving up your time today to be uh, members of the panel and um, thank you all to all the audience for taking part, all the many partai, the questions, the support that have come through on chat. Aroha mai, if I haven't had a chance to read them out, um, but I am sure that somebody has been capturing everything for us at a um, later date. So what I'm gonna do now is just hand it back to Tracy.